my brains are open yeah, 24 hours a day. I don't mean this fellow, Paul Erdős, a really famous mathematician who had a very quirky last couple decades of his life where he would get in touch with another mathematician and then show up at his door and say, my brain is open, and proceed to live with the family for three, four, five, six months, during which course the two mathematicians would publish a whole lot of papers together. So your Erdős number means, if it's one, it means you co-authored a paper with Erdős, and so on and so forth. It's kind of like uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, only a little more serious. I don't mean Erdős, I mean this brain. This is a piece of software called The Brain. I did not create it. Uh, but I have populated one. In fact, I have the largest published brain on earth. Um, I was on their first press tour 18 and a half years ago and fell in love with the tool immediately. It looked like how I thought. So I've been feeding my brain for a long time. You can go look at my brain for free at jerrysbrain.com. And I also mean this one, the one on board. What? Well, the one on board has been digesting the world for 20 years plus. Um, I got concerned about the word consumer back in the mid-90s and uh, stewed on it for a long time. I'm curious about way too many things, as any of my friends will tell you. And all of this turned into a thesis I call the relationship economy. I think consumer mass marketing capitalism is bad for us and broken and falling over, actually, of its own accord. And it's being replaced by something that has to do with authentic connections and trust. In fact, trust is really the center of a lot of the stuff that I'm focusing on. So a lot of what my wet brain is processing, I put into my software brain. So it holds all those ideas and links. It is curated context, curated by me. Uh, now over 292,000 nodes, more than half a million links, all put in by hand by me, and available openly at jerrysbrain.com and for a buck in the app store for your iPad. Uh, just look for an app called, believe it or not, Jerry's Brain with my face on it. And these two brains are both open. Um, the wet one is addressing questions such as, how did the social contract break? How did we screw things up so badly? And why am I optimistic that we can fix it? What would happen if we trusted you? Because I've discovered that most of the institutions we take for granted these days were designed for mistrust of the average person. What is the future of work as automation and software eat all jobs? How are we going to stay alive? What does that mean as it cascades up towards social policy and government interventions? How can companies build authentic relationships? What does it mean to be trustworthy instead of just saying, trust me, trust me? Should companies stalk or serve? Do companies even know that they're busy stalking their prospective customers and that that's a pretty hostile act? Do companies even know how they might serve? What do very disparate topics like open source software, traffic calming, and workplace democracy have in common? What is design from trust? Not design for trust, uh, not design thinking. I think this is the thing after design thinking. This is design thinking with more of a moral compass. So I help organizations create relationships that are based on trust. I help them become more trustworthy organizations. I help them see value that's right in front of them, they just can't see it because of how they see. I help them grind new lenses to see the world. That means they can invent new offers, whether it's goods or services. It means, it means they can reinvent marketing and public relations because a lot of marketing is basically how do you pretend to do something, not how do you build an actual relationship. But more than that, I help companies express their purpose and reframe their markets. They, it's big thinking that helps them think about their purpose in the world out of which come viable strategies that are different from the historic strategies. All that means they might need to shift their culture, which is never an easy task, but all of that means they can make a difference in the world. And that's a big piece of this purpose. I do these things by speaking. I come in and I do a speech. Consulting, I do longer term engagements. Or advising, I'm an advisor to several startups and a few uh, corporations and some nonprofits. If any of this is interesting to you, I would love to hear from you. My email is right here. There's a website where you can learn a lot more. I would love to talk with you. Thanks.